Hello, people. Okay. Decent lighting. Okay, Facebook lid. All right, wait for you guys to get on for a minute. Welcome to winning. All right, we have lots to discuss today. <clears throat> Susan, I already got the record button. You are my you are my um, anchor symbol for recording. <clears throat> Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Got my mess up right here. I'm gonna I have my um this is my how to time travel um and teleport information booklet for the apothecary if anybody's curious how to do this later. <laughs> So cool. I'm, I'm going to laminate it and hang it there. I have so much fun stuff to, it's like my inner child is like the museum of weirdness in there and I love it. Okay, so let's jump in. Um, we have a lot to discuss, but I do want to see the pulse of where you are. I'm assuming it's probably some version of where I am because we're all in this shit together, pretty much. Uh, we are being asked to grow through it right now, right? So we're in this retrograde for what, another, I don't know, five, six days. I think it ends like either on the 12th or the 18th. Um, and again, it's just kind of be that re, like putting you back into uh, cycles, patterns, loops that are not allowing you to integrate with your higher self. So I, I'm really looking at this year as higher self boot camp. And and you, you know, in order for us to truly be in higher self boot camp, really, the whole idea of the non duality class this year, like our focal point, so that we don't get too heavy in what we're going to have to grow through this year, is is kind of like that idea of character development. And the reason why we're using this as our carrot right now is because when you can take more of a, an observer's perspective over your own life, it's going to create almost like that medicinal mushroom effect where it's going to give you a little buffer between it all feeling so real and just realizing, you know, this is the script that I've been playing off of for a really long time. And the reason I can't make money the same way and the reason that I can't heal my body the same way as I used to is because my script has changed. So the things that I have done in the past right, are, are no longer either motivating me or working. And I know that every single one of you is experiencing that in some form or another, right? So it's like the motivation that we used to have to like survive is, is so different now. Like our motivation is coming from more play, more joy, more creativity. But at the same time, we have that like terrifying fear of why am I not motivated to make money? Why am I not motivated to like do all of these things that kept me in society? Because we've all been secretly asking to get out. And when you ask, it's given. And so like when you ask for joy, when you ask for peace, when you ask for these things, then what happens is the whole universe conspires to show you where you are vibrating that is out of alignment with that. And so this is why you will always hear me say, don't overprocess, don't overprocess, don't overprocess. And, and also healers, heal your damn self. Okay. I say those two things a lot. And the reason why is because we, we get the rush of source energy. We get the rush of the feeling, you know, we, we, we give and, and then it feels so good that the only way that we feel good is if we're doing that. So we're getting our dopamine hits from our spiritual practices and, and what happens is, like I said, every single time you chip away at the higher you, you are uncovering more of the lower you. So if you're using the spiritual world as your dopamine hit, you're unleashing the gates of hell unwillingly because as above is below, yin and yang, you are both at, all the time. So this is where you're feeling bad. Just feel bad. Don't go into the ether, right? Because again, your lower self can't get to the ether. So it's waiting for you when you get back. And when you get back, you don't have serotonin. You don't have much of anything because going into the jet stream of source energy 
sucks a lot of your minerals and vitamins because it, it requires more gas. Okay. It requires more energy from you to go into that space. So channelers who are laying hands and doing this for a living, right? We feel good when we're in the flow, but this is why I'm saying heal your damn self because whether or not you're not taking on anybody's cancer or anything like that anymore in your sessions, you are ripping through your minerals and nutrients. Okay. Because you are still having a co-creation with the natural world. All right. So the, those are two main points that I have learned the hard way. And again, stubbornness is at the backbone of invention because like, I feel, I feel like I'm perpetually a child who's trying to figure out the laziest, easiest way to do it. But the way it ends up, I figure that out is by doing it the most hard, extreme, painful way I possibly can, because whatever you resist, you get, right? So that's just kind of a reminder. So um, we, our class is growing, which I love. And, and because we're in, we're in higher self boot camp our ego is going to have a major, major, major shift this year. It's going to be the biggest thing you probably notice at the end of this year is, is your ego and like what it has become from this year. It's, it's job in the higher realms, five, six, 70, 70 is when we start to get our light body and notice that seven number. Okay. When your ego's job moving forward with you because it is a part of you and it actually helps balance and density is going to be your personal assistant, not your saboteur. All right. Not your critic, not your program runner, not your groundhog day maker, not your protection and your defense, but your organized, focused, uh, logical, linear personal assistant that people like us really need. Right. Because we don't want to be necessarily wasting our time with the hows or the logistics or the black and white stuff. But co-creating until we do get that white body. Right. We're all we're going to need a balancing agent because the highs and the lows. And as we are working with our different aspects of ourselves, our different alchemies, we are are learning that that we have been the saboteur the whole time. It may very, very, very much feel like the outside world is sabotaging. It feels like the partner, blah, blah, blah. But ultimately the reality that you're sitting in is your choice. That's your partner, right? That's your job, right? That's your belief systems around money. So when we move into this higher responsibility or if you can get yourself to higher self boot camp, we can no longer blame or wait because we are choosing that partner that makes us feel like we are trapped, right? We are choosing those belief systems around money. We are choosing that script to keep playing over and over again. And as you get like pressurized into 5D, you may not think that you are consciously making these choices, but remember guys, there's four levels of our consciousness. And there is three major streams of vibration that you are emitting whether you are aware of it or not. So your old self is still projecting into physical reality through law of attraction, right? Your inner child is, is projecting, your body is projecting, okay? And then your highest version of yourself is projecting. So you're gonna get the algorithm or the middle ground, like the chronic place mixed all together. And that's gonna be what you're living right now. Right. So in higher self boot camp, the number one thing that we do is we ask questions to ourselves first. Right. And we look around at our reality as our guru. OK, you could learn more about your own enlightenment by studying your life. Right. For 24 hours than taking a sixty thousand dollar seminar. OK. Or another workshop. All right. Because if you would just pay attention to the character that you are being, whether you like it or not, or, or choosing it or not, and how your world is showing up to you, you would be able to see where your alignment is. And something that I'm going to bring back this year, and I've done this twice this week, it's just kind of a random thing. And I'll put it in a, a work uh, worksheet form is, you know, the two major questions that I ask in quantum fitness is, 
what have you had for a really long time that you, that you don't want? Okay. Or like, that could be fear. That could be debt. That could be, you know, just a, some part of your body that's been hurting. It, it doesn't have to be necessarily a thing. It could be a person, people, person, or thing. Something that you've had as a part of you or with you or stuck to you for a really long time that you, that you still don't want, right? And then what do you want that you've wanted for a very, very long time that you still don't have? Those are your two duality questions because that comes from the grief and loss that is in your masculine and feminine right? What do you have that you don't want is the feminine wound. What you can't get is the masculine wound. Okay. So we really kind of covered that at the end of the alchemy year last year of, of like the, fe the major, the biggest feminine wound on the planet is that she is so full of love and nowhere to express. Okay. And the divine masculine is starving. And the way that our collective is set up is that we that we look at each other as the reason why, instead of really balancing ourselves. Okay, so that's if you need some reflection time, go back to alchemy. All right, so moving forward, you've noticed that like the idea of this character building, I'm just like, I won't let it go. And the reason why is because in quantum physics, in order for us to jump timelines or quantum leap, we're, we have to be working from a, from a line, right? Like an intention and an outcome, okay? And then our job is to walk the line or walk the bridge, which we talked about the three bridges last week or in second Sunday or whatever class. And so you're walking the line, right? But do you know what line you're walking? Because you could be on a, a timeline right now that is not a match to where you want to go and the only way that you're really going to create a new two point or a new line is to have a new intention about yourself, right? And and really focus on word, uh, you know, thought, word, and deed, which means the thoughts need to match the actions that match the behavior that match what you say. So you can't be higher self, but then be like. The stupid government won't give me my paycheck, right? Because that would not be an alignment. That would be splitting your focus. And then that would give you a split manifestation, right? So, well, I only get to feel like higher self when, at, you know, when I'm, when I'm coaching, but the rest of the time I feel like a victim of the circumstance, right? So if you would pay attention to your character throughout the day, right, then and you could get really solid, not necessarily that you know how to be her or him, and you don't know when it's going to manifest. That's not your job. The character building, you become the how. You become the how, which means that like the airplane effect, you're grounded, you're sitting, you're trapped, you're waiting, and then you go through the turbulence, and then you get to the jet screen, right? So someone said this, and I don't remember who it was, but it was like a really good way to understand um, raising your vibration because we hear this so much and I think that vibration and frequency have almost become a little bit of a trigger word because people are like I am raising my vibration I am raising my I am being positive but let's again change that wording to flow and let's change it to energy so if you want to get to the 10th floor reality you have to be able to be a conduit for more energy all right. You have to be able to stream more energy. Right. So it's not about like, I am a high vibe. I'm talking about consistently. Divine feminine, all you are is the conduit for source. That's it. And because you are also imagination, you can take the form of whatever you choose. Okay. You can take the form of waiting. You can take the form of being a slave. You can take the form of being trapped. You can take the form of whatever you choose, but you may not realize what you're choosing. And this is why if you get intentional about this character that you choose to play, you'll see the discord, okay? You'll see the discord. So I, what I used to do back in the day, and Jules is probably remembers this, is anybody that was trying to like, like create their soulmate to manifest like a partner for themselves 
we used to, I used to do this thing in sessions where I'd say, okay, create a 500 list. And this 500 list is 500 traits and things about him or her. Okay. And they're at 500. It's, oh, I can do that. You get to 200 and you just stop. Right. And the reason why I want you to go to 500 is because it's such an outside of the box perspective. It's like, you're really having to like deep, deep down, like, whoa, what kind of trauma do they have? And like, you know, who, who's, what's their relationship with their mother? Right. And so then once they actually get the list done, what I have them do is with a blue pen and a red pen, read out loud each of the traits that they desire in another and notice which ones feel good and like, yes. And which ones trigger you? Like, I'm never going to have that or I'm too insecure to have that. Then there's a red check next to that. And the reason why I have you do that is because you can literally see how far or close you are to your own manifestation. You can see like if you're getting triggered where, you know, you want someone to show up for you. And when you read show up for me, it feels bad. You're still holding grief over the last person who didn't show up for you, which means that if you do manifest a partner right now, you're going to manifest the resistance. And so our, the objective of the game is to get all blue circles, right? Because blue is the color of our truth, right? And red is the color of stop, pay attention. So you can do this 500 list with your own character because you are actually the soulmate that you desire. And I thought I would just put it up in like a quick worksheet just so you can just play and then what you can do is it's a way to check in maybe once a week and notice where you read something out loud with your voice, which is where all of your triggers and grace and superpowers are. You can feel the discord and of, of it being a match. Yes, I 100% deserve that and I'm ready for that. Or if this guy walks through the door right now, am I a hot mess and I don't feel good enough for him? Well, you're going to know that because remember how I've said two or three classes ago, the conscious version of you sees you very differently than the way you're actually vibrating, right? And this is why when people see us in a way that we don't see ourselves, it triggers us. But ultimately, conscious mind is projecting this image of what it believes it wants you to be, your hero version. And so you don't actually see or have to pay attention to who you're actually vibrating as unless someone triggers you. So it's almost like a way to trigger yourself and play the game of hot and cold to see where you are in alignment and where there's still discord in fine tuning, right? You can also see by creating this list of this 500 list of these traits that not only you would want to have, because ultimately we all want to date ourselves, you know, like we want someone who loves like us, feels like us, Right. Even though we're playing the yin and yang, you know, and even though we do want that opposition, usually the reason why we choose partners that are so opposite is because we are so out of alignment. Right. Because like I'm too rigid. So I need a, a, a husband that's just a child. Right. Or I'm too playful. My husband is too serious. So I'm here to find balance here. You know, so but when you really are in alignment of your soul, it's you are a balanced duality. So the partner will be a balanced duality. So it won't be so extreme. It'll be more peaceful, right? So the best way for us to attract the business partner or whatever is to become thy soulmate, right? So if you're still struggling with your character design, then, and you're not like, I know who she is and that doesn't waver through the day, or you don't, you know, well, maybe I don't want that. If you're not wishy-washy, then you don't need to do this. But if you're still kind of like, sometimes I want to be alone. Sometimes I want to be married. Sometimes I want to be a healer. Sometimes I just want to sit on a beach and sell sh shells. You know, if you're still wishy-washy, this might be also a good way for the, the other aspects of you to talk to you because they also have desires, right? And so you can create that list. And it really comes down to fundamentally, if we do not know who we are becoming this year, then we will become what the, the chronic pattern of ourselves has been because it's fast and furious. It's let go or be dragged at this point. And, and your higher self really doesn't care in what 
way you go through boot camp. Do you go through challenging? Do you go through hiding and ditching? Do you go through, you know, trying to quit? It doesn't matter. You know, you've signed up, right? You, you keep saying yes to this. Like you keep asking, you keep reading, you keep working on this. And so higher self is taking that as action of your intention. So your only job this year, literally, is to grow through the fertilizer that is coming, but grow through it from an intentional place. So I was, I was sitting here like in the back the other day and I'm just thinking, wow, this is a major fertilizer. And then I thought about, okay, like what is the purpose of fertilizer? It feeds the plant. Okay, so how is the shit that is happening right now feeding me? And that like really shifted my perspective because I was like, okay, it's feeding my focus. I'm having to be very focused right now. It's feeding my discipline. I'm having to be very disciplined right now. It's feeding my order. Like I really need to have order right now. It's feeding my time management. I have to have very good time management. It's feeding my, like what I have time for and what I don't. It's really helped me see where, you know, as a healer or a teacher, or whatever, like how I can help so much, but how much it was stealing from my own focus. Like it's really helped me see that. So almost like it's, it's feeding my priorities. That might be a better word. And the more pressurized your life becomes, the more higher self is trying to get you to be fed from the pressure. Like it should be feeding you, not terrifying you, not making you just right. But, but going, okay, how can this, what is this feeding? Because it's probably feeding something that you've been wishy-washy on. Or it's been, it's, or you've not been paying attention because it was easy before. The ease of being able to show up in 3D the way we, we could before is gone, okay? The way you used to make money, gone. The way that you used to be with your partner, gone. I know you're feeling this. You're probably like, well, this felt so much easier before. Well, the reason why is because you are different, okay? You are not the same. And if you've been through my boot camp, my quantum fitness boot camp, you definitely physically are not the same, okay? You can't react the same. You can't feel the same. If anything, you're way more irritated by the third dimensional construct because you've been purified. So you're a lightweight to it. You're not like jaded as much anymore. You're welcome. I'm sorry. Okay, like it's just one of those things that when you keep detoxing yourself and purifying yourself, all that is going to do is make you less tolerant, right? It's, it's not going to make this easier. It's going to make you less tolerant so that you actually do something differently, right? So we look at this year of seven and isn't it interesting how I'm always teaching about sevens, seven year cycle seven steps of manifestation. Okay. Well, today, what we're going to do is we're going to unpack the seven stages of manipulation. Now we are all, all victimized by this and we have all been the perpetrator. Okay. Because when I was talking about in, in second Sunday about how love is not enough anymore, because again, the third dimensional reality of love, the definition in the, in the dictionary basically means I will give up myself for your happiness, right? That is in the dictionary. Like that's not an option anymore. Like I don't know anyone in this class that that would be an option for anymore, right? Because that would literally mean that you were like letting go to who you were becoming. And that just would, would not be okay, all right? So I thought that it would be an opportunity for us to, um, unpack our our seven I, because i know that you've heard them but most of the time when you've heard these seven stages of manipulation it's usually around the narcissistic relationships or you know or the impact that was abused but i want to tell you something specific that your entire third 3d collective collective game is built on these seven steps okay this the whole entire 3d game 
is the seven steps of manipulation. And you're going to see where the echoes come in. You're going to see where the, the, the settling and the bargaining comes in. Okay. And because this seven steps of manipulation to keep you a slave is anchored in your money, in your job. Okay. It's even in your own relationship to your own body. It's, it's permeated and built in everything. OK, and I know some of you guys that have been in some scary relationships will be like, oh, yeah, like you'll identify these right away. But where it's more unobvious is in our our collective um, uh, corporate America, in our banking, it's in our food. You'll see this. You'll see this like, oh, my gosh, they're doing this at the grocery store. They're doing this at my bank. They're doing this at my job. Like my boyfriend's doing this. I'm doing this. And it might be less obvious where you're doing this because I have like this, this way of looking at people who are very spiritual is we are, are usually trying to be the opposite, but we create the same problem by trying to be the opposite of this. And you'll see. Okay. So number one, let me pull them up here. Okay. Great. Does anybody have any questions before I jump into this at all? Anybody? Okay. So the the first one, and, and again, I'm going to kind of talk about it in a relationship and then like in your collective life, because this is the way it's set up. Number one step is love bombing or intense connection. Okay. And I know you felt that you, you meet the guy and it's like, oh my God, I've known him in 10 lives. Or you meet that girlfriend and it's like immediate sisterhood, okay? Or you connect with a job, an idea, or a vision. And I mean, it's like, it's a hell yes. It feels like home, okay? It feels like, like that's the only thing that you could ever think of or do in that moment. It's all consuming. And in relationship psychology, it's called love bombing. All right. And they call it love bombing because it's like that you're in love. It's the honeymoon effect of the job or the friendship or the loan you just got or, you know, whatever school you just whatever. I mean, you can find this and and it's an instant bind. And the reason why it's constructed this way is because it's. It's constructed on people who are feeling absent of something like you're feeling the misconnection from mom. So you're going to meet that person that feels like mom. You're, you're finally going to get the home of your dreams because it's like, that's what your soul has been aching for. And it's difficult for us because we think, oh my gosh, I'm manifesting it. It's finally here. I mean, you know, I built my entire relationship uh, with quantum fitness off of my last narcissistic relationship. You see, so it was like, this was textbook in that relationship, okay? So does everybody get that? Or does anybody have any questions on that? Because again, when you, when you find, like a lot of the times that you find yourself getting love bomb, if you really track right before you were desperate, okay? There is a desperation. There is a low self-worth. There is an, a need like, I really need this, okay? Remember how I teach about, like, hope turns to expectations, expectations turns to disappointment, right? Usually when you find yourself being love-bombed or, like, getting the perfect fit for you for something, it's coming from a point where your head was going below the water, all right? And this is where, like, your bank throws you a bone, or you finally get this job that you have been like searching for, or you finally get your idea of creating your workshop or something, you know, you're going to have to find this analogy of instant connection in time relationships, health and money here, because it's everywhere. All right. So does everybody get that on a, on an understanding? You could probably find a memory right now where that ha you have either witnessed that experienced it or watched someone else. Okay. The step two is where 
that you were you are you get the trust gained. It's the locking system. This is where codependency happens. Okay. This is where two weeks after you meet the guy that you love, you get pregnant. Okay. This is where the anchor starts. This is where now you're in the job in two weeks and it doesn't feel the same, but you need that paycheck. Okay. There is a codependency that is created right after love bombing, right after. And it's a, important because as a sensitive and empathic person, even though you're being bombarded with love, there are imperfections that you're seeing, but because you're filled with so much connection and so much love, it feels so good to be too good to be true. There is kind of this essence. And we usually think that that little danger signal guys is coming from our fear of love or our fear of success or our like own mind, or we go, but it's that so much potential, right? I mean, it, we're talking like two weeks in, you're going to start to feel codependent or obligated, or, you know, you get pregnant or something. And it's not always a two week mark, guys. I would say longer in the past, it took longer. This is why I always say, you know, who you're dating after three months, or, you know, what your employees are, or employers are after three months, because after three months, these seven steps are exposed and usually we'll end up staying another 20 years, <laughs> even though we're like fully aware of these. We're like, because you'll see as you get to the end, the goodness of you is what keeps you there. Your heart, your, your kind, loving, your, your determination, your strength, your um, unconditional love for others is actually what keeps you here. Okay. So people who go two weeks and it's like, I'm out, right? Like that isn't usually us. It's like another thing too, strong women is once we've invested in something, we are growers. We want to grow it. We want to see it through. We've already invested our time. We've told our kids, we've, you know, quit our other job. We've moved into the house. Like we've, we've taken an effort that now creates the attachment. So that's number two, is the attachment is created. And so now the two of you, whatever, whatever it's the job in you, the, the loan in you, the bank in you, whatever, the partner in you, the diet, whatever, okay? The love bombing of the excitement of the diet, right? And so then you're attached. Now you owe all this money and you got to stick with it. So number three is where, this is why it's three months, guys. Because by number three is when the breadcrumbing starts. Hopefully you're all familiar with this term by now because it's you've done it and others have done to you. Now, I will say that if you are have considered yourself a strong woman or an alpha woman, then this triggers a major wound inside of us to give more. So when we are breadcrumbed, guys, this is where all of a sudden, that love bombing turns into a crumb, okay? It starts to be like, instead of you're beautiful and amazing and the best person in the world, it's like you're getting a hit like once in a while. You're seeing like, you're getting enough to keep you. So I would consider that like a paycheck. Your paycheck is your breadcrumb. It's not enough to create big abundance, but it's enough to keep you there. So the third stage of manipulation is called breadcrumbing. And this is where all of a sudden that showing up for you, you know, opening the car door, being the most amazing partner, like the job, like you're getting bonused, blah, blah, blah. Like by the third week, you're happy you have a job because you're seeing people get laid off, right? And like, they're starting to short your paycheck here and there, but, oh, it's okay. We'll make it up on the next check. Like, Corporations do this on purpose, like, you, you know, or take more off the top. Like you should be getting this, 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 and this. And you're like, yes, you sign that contract. And it's like, they're already screwing up your paycheck by third month. Okay. Or in a relationship, this is where kind of the courting phase is over. And now they're putting in the minimal effort to keep you. Okay. So it's feed, it's almost like you're in jail, but because you're getting three square meals, you're not burning the place down because you want to eat again, all right? 
Now, and this is like, I'm telling you guys, this seven, seven layers of manipulation is in your bones. Like your body knows this so well that it doesn't even think twice about it. Okay. Are you tracking? Does anybody have any questions on this? Are you starting to see this pattern? Okay. All right. Number three, and it's depending on the, the slyness. See, you are an empath sensitive light worker. So usually what you're going to attract is a pretty sly perpetrator. All right. You're not going to, you're not going to attract some obvious, you know, loser. You're going to like attract some big business here, some strong energy to match yours on the other side of the spectrum, victim perpetrator. So this is where the critiques start coming. Okay. The sarcasm, the, well, you know, I really like it when you hair your hair down, you look prettier or, or, you know, like, it's just a tiny, like, I love you so much, but, or, you know, it's like, it's a slow drip of criticism that begins. And this is designed to chop down your worth. All right. Now, if you are a feminine listening to this, you are the wild free energy goddess that attracted this pet predator. And now this predator or this perpetrator or God love a wounded man or corporation is trying to keep you. They know what they have. They know who you are, okay? But if you know who you are, you're not gonna tolerate these seven steps. So the criticism is mixed with the breadcrumbing, okay? So it's like, all of a sudden, you're not being as much you. And it's like so subtle, right? That because it's just not worth the criticism or it's not worth like getting upset about, or maybe you do need to tone it down because most of the time at this step, you're attached. So you need them, or at least you believe you do. So now that you're attached, you're obligated and you have two choices. You can either run or, you know, or, you know, throw tantrums or whatever. You usually don't do this yet because it's so subtle. It's so, it's almost like you get rid up for doing more than your job. That would be kind of the criticism I'm talking about. Or you do things perfectly, but you forgot this. Next time, be better, right? And so you'll see this everywhere. You'll see this in your, I, mean, I guarantee you're seeing this is how you were parented, right? Like you're seeing this all over your parent, not your necessarily your parenting, but how you were parented, okay? And some of it was more extreme because you're a little kid. So you don't understand this manipulation yet. And so it feels more intense. But as you get older, you can do five, 10 years in a relationship and not see this, okay? You could change your hair. You could like stop dancing. You could stop doing all kinds of play and not even notice it, all right? Because again, I'm not talking about obvious. I think it's becoming more obvious for us because we're becoming more aware. But I think for most of our lives, we attuned. See, this is where your worth is destroyed in a relationship, all right? And now and if, you're, if your worth is destroyed in a relationship, guys, guess what? Your worth is destroyed. So it's not like you're, it's like you're even struggling in other areas that probably with this now, because your relationship is the intimacy of you. It's into me, I see. So it's, it's really got the claws in there and see the hardest part is all of the criticism and breadcrumbing is coming from a loving place. You know, they love you or you know that they appreciate you because they tell you. Okay. And, and you feel that they love and you feel the potential and you understand that maybe this is coming from their wound or they're intimidated by you, but it doesn't matter because ultimately this seven steps is designed to break you down and break your spirit and disconnect you from source energy. This is how the game is created. Okay. Does everybody understand that part? Okay. So this next part is Let's let me. I wrote it a couple of different ways, um, and you, you'll notice too. Okay, one thing I want to highlight: the criticism is only when you're being vulnerable in yourself. Only, not when you're acting like the Matrix. When you are wearing your hair, like you just feel like good one day, 
or you're like, you know, I'm gonna kick it up a notch. I'm gonna wear cute earrings to work, you know, or I'm gonna wear my favorite skirt. And it's like, or when you're just being vulnerable and like you're speaking your truth to someone and saying that really hurt my feelings. When you are, uh, when you go to your authentic nature is when you will be gently criticized from a constructive place. This is where it's constructive, guys. You need to be more organized, okay? Like you need to take more responsibility here, okay? I know that you you love fashion and everything, Jess, but you're at work. You know what I mean? Like, like it's and it's coming from a loving, like I'm trying to help you. You have to understand that this criticism is not like blatantly like, why are you wearing that? Some of it is, and we've stuck with those guys too. But most of the time in the beginning, at least your first year with this, whatever you're dealing with, it's, it's more coming from, I'm trying to help you be your best self because I love you, okay? Can you see how your worth gets destroyed here? All right, so then after that, where's my notes? Okay, so this is what starts creating your emotional outbursts, okay? Because although they're chipping at your worth, although they're breadcrumbing you, they're just giving you enough, although you're kind of saying bye to parts of yourself to just make this world easier now, you know, because you've got a baby and you're codependent on something. You are codependent on something if you are allowing this. And that's the whole collective is to get you codependent on something that you don't have that you need. Okay. So you start to have these emotional outbursts and, and you, you start to lose it. Like you're calm, you're collective, you try to take the criticism, you try, you know, you do the best you can until literally something takes over you and you explode. And this is so hard on us because this is where we start to look crazy. Okay. This is where abuse starts to get turned around on us as if we're the abuser. And this is where our life becomes very unsafe because they are so good at this that we literally are like, what is wrong with me? Like, I can't hold it together. Like, am I the problem? And this is where not only your worth is going, but your mental health starts to go. Okay. Your connection to the I am now is like, it's, it's, you're overthinking, you're, you're apologetic. You go into guilt and shame because you're not an angry person. You don't want to outburst on your children or on your partner. You don't want to like threaten to quit your job, right? You don't, you don't want to like have to take sick days because you're going to lose your mind. So now you have a choice. You either act, you hold every single thing inside and you do what you're told or you lose what you're attached to. Okay. Are you feeling this? Okay. This is real. And this is what we're up against this year in every area of your life. Because once the, once the you, the real you, the tantrum inside of you is like, this is not fair. And then it gets twisted around on you. So their rejection or abandonment or criticism, then we trying to take our, our taking our power back makes us look crazy, right? And so now they're going, oh, I'm worried about you. Are you okay? Like, this is, this is scaring me. Do we need to get you some help? Right? Because again, the seven steps of manipulation is usually pretty calm. Okay? So what happens next is why we stay. What happens next is you get the two weeks of good behavior after this. You get the person you married. You get the job that you wanted. You get the quick bonus for no reason. You get incentive at work. You get chores done around the house. You get, you need a me day, go to the spa. You can feel how real this is because it's affecting my throat chakra, you guys. Like major, okay. And then hope returns because we're like, you're seeing what they're doing. They're trying to be the person that I know they are. Because even though they're doing all these things to you guys, and, and whether it's the banking system or it's the job or whatever, you, you feel the unconditional love from their soul. It's like, you know who they are underneath this manipulation or this behavior. 
And so now because you're getting those two weeks of good graces, and it usually doesn't last more than that, usually less, you're starting to grab on to that version of them again. Okay. And, and because again, what happens is after an emotional outbreak from you, you'll either go into guilt or shame or you'll shut down. Okay. If you go into guilt and shame and start making up the damage to them, they won't do the two weeks of bad behavior or good behavior. Okay. But if you go, I'm done. And you start to use that feminine threat or masculine, like this just isn't working for me here. That's when you'll get the two weeks of good behavior because they know what lured you in to begin with. Now, is this happening consciously? I will say in relationships amongst intimate partners, no. Corporations, 100% yes. I mean, this is strategic. If you work for a corporation, this is happening to you, okay? Guaranteed, this is why like I, I have been an entrepreneur since I was 14, right? Because it's just like, I'm a go-getter. And so honestly, I'm punished when I'm a go-getter in the corporate America. Like I'm punished or demoted because they see me as a threat. Then they steal your ideas and make you work more because they see you can, you see? So most people like me would, I mean, I would rather die than be, be in that environment where I really can't create, okay? So once you get to this stage in this relationship, whether, wherever it is, is is now you feel hope again and, and, and they start making empty promises. And because they're actually showing up physically, you know, you're getting the flowers, you're getting the, you know, we're going to go on that trip. Okay. We're going to finally do this. You know, whatever it is that's promised, you're probably only going to get a third of what's promised and you're only going to get what happens in the next few days. Okay. Because what you're going to do is you're going to put your defenses down. As soon as you put your defenses down, guys, it's gentle return to old behavior. It's, it's, it's like, it doesn't happen right away. They don't like leave their towel on the floor the next day. Okay. Or, but see, here's the thing is you're holding it in and you're holding it together and you're holding all of yourself inside as a prisoner now to keep this attachment going. And it's just going to take a towel being left on the floor for you to lose it again. And it's planned because again, now we can make you look crazy. And see, now you need one more than anything because there is something wrong with you, all right? So because your worth is so low, guys, when your worth is low, ego's driving your vehicle, okay? That's why don't make choices and don't take actions in that unworthy feeling. Wait till higher self returns before you do anything in physical reality. And, and the reason why is because if ego is in the driver's seat and ego is not integrated yet, ego will bow its head down in shame and take the breadcrumb. Like, this is all I deserve. I'm a horrible mother, right? Like, so, and again, because now law of attraction and law of resistance are involved in your relationship. The more that you try to be good, the worse you look. This is where you start making mistakes at work. This is where the business that you put together just fails. See, something will happen Right when you start to see the old behavior like come back, you will lose some freedom outside of you because it's all constructed for you to get completely codependent on a system, on a person, on a place, on a thing, because then you can't stream source energy from direct. This 3D construct is for you to be a hotspot. You have to be a hotspot for someone and you need a hotspot, which means I can't stream. I can't pay my bills without this, right? I can't be a good mom without this. I can't keep my job without doing this. So it's the version of selling your soul, okay? And we don't know we're doing it because we believe this is love. We believe this is what good people do. They stick relationships out. They follow through, they keep their word, they keep working on themselves. But see, the poor guys and girls that have been in relationships with us over the last like 10 years, this is a lot harder for them because we're, we're going through the seven stages of manipulation while we're taking classes. So we're like, so it's, it's almost like now we're starting to preach this stuff on them. And they're like, 
whatever makes you happy. You do you, beautiful, right? I'll even throw some money at it occasionally, right? And, and again, now I'm not saying all of you have codependent partners, but I'm saying that you have been programmed to be this type of love, right? Like, like asking for permission to be yourself, okay? And not wanting to dance anymore, not wanting to play anymore, not wanting to do the things you love, not because you can't, but because it just doesn't feel like you're even motivated to do those things. You're not a person that wants to dance anymore. You're not a person that wants to dress like a, a certain way because you don't even want the attention anymore. And it's just easier for you to keep your volume down than have to go through it. Because you'll notice any single time, once you have become attached to something that is three-dimensionally based, as soon as you show up authentically, that's when you're gonna get criticized, attacked, judged, fired, okay? So that's why it always feels like a blind side when you start being yourself. This is where all the echoes come in. Because here's the thing, with law of attraction and law of resistance, these seven steps are now coming like magnetic. My worth is low, so more things to make me feel unworthy. More people to breadcrumb me. See, another word for getting breadcrumbed is ghosted, right? Because you're like searching and trying to find out what and find the breadcrumb that they left and figure out why they left you. Okay, so this happens in every form of you actually asking for attachment because when you're desperate, you're asking for attachment. And so you get it. When you are asking from a needy place, I really want to find my soulmate. I really need this job. I really need this money. That's when you get the attachment relationship because that's what you asked for. Attachment is these seven steps. Okay. So let's keep going. So what happens as a byproduct of the breadcrumbing and the emotional outbursts and then the good behavior that comes back is that you begin to give up your desires because you're managing this, okay? You're one energy source. If you've got drama in your house every two weeks and now because your worth is low, it's affecting every area of your life, you don't even remember your dreams. You don't even know how to play. If it doesn't help you survive, you're not doing it. If it is not to like try to be good somehow, you're not doing it. Nonsense? No. Okay? So this is where you begin to give up your big desires. And guys, this is where all addiction is. Because the only thing that we can do to have the slightest bit of tantrum for our inner child is to be addicted to something. That's it. This is where sweets, food, sex, porn, shopping, spiritual study, something. You create a tiny lifeline for yourself or five lifelines for yourself that keep you alive. Okay. You fantasize over a movie or a book or, you know, you start drinking at night or smoking or something because you need and the instant gratification of what your dream used to feel like. And that's all you get, okay? Now you're a person with an addiction. So now look at how you're being seen, okay? It's like, you really are watching a lot of YouTube lately, right? You know, now the craziness is now, is now you're being like criticized for your only salvation, right? Your security blanket in all of this becomes another critical viewpoint, right? You start sharing woo-woo stuff, your boss sees it. What are you doing? Okay. You're putting some woo-woo stuff. That doesn't look good for our company. I have a, a, um, an LED light alien, of course, for the apothecary. And he's like smoking a cigarette, like zero fucks given. That's his energy that he's putting off. And of course I had him in the window because it gets a lot of attention. And I was told that that doesn't go with the look of the building. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, so it's like, even my cool ass, really high vibe landlord is still kind of like, mm, 
You know what I mean? And so I was like, oh, okay, well, I don't ask for permission. You know, I ask for forgiveness. So I'm going to put him somewhere else. You know, it's like, and then by the time he sees how much traffic I'm going to bring, he'll be like, put all the aliens you want out there. So I'm seeing this everywhere, even in your good relationships, guys, even in your higher vibe relationships, there will be a trace element. Okay. So we're getting down to like, we're getting down to like destruction here. You can see this, you can feel it coming because now you have addictions that you're holding on to dear life that you probably feel embarrassed, guilt, or shame over or that are actually creating more issues in your relationship because you're spending money or you're spending time. Okay, so now you're having to hide. This is where you start hiding in your own relationships, in your own life, okay? You're having to hide yourself and your truth from the people that you say and the things that you have around you the most. So these are going to be your attachments. So they're going to be the bulk of your reality. All right. So, okay. We've got, I'm looking for the last ones here. Um, give up desires, addiction. And now we become emotionally addicted to the relationship. This is where your final addiction. So what's the definition of addiction? Lack of source. The, the truest uh, the truest meaning of addiction is a lack of connection. So by the time the seven steps of manipulation have just perpetrated you and engulfed your soul, now the only way that you can hold on to yourself is by the very thing that is destroying you. This is where you can't let go of the guy. This is why where you start breaking up, but you can't let go. This is where you start obsessing about them, okay? This is where you start to, like, worry you're going to get fired every day from your job, okay? Like, it, you need it. Like, it's not even something that is good for you. But see, as an empath and a sensitive and intuitive beings, we feel when we get to this seventh step that it is our job to make this work because we feel such a strong connection with them. The sex is amazing, or they have been there for me when I was up, you know, at my work, they created it, you know, like, like they're the only thing holding you together. They're the only thing worth living. Okay. And so your higher self will now start ripping you apart from this attachment via any means possible. Otherwise you're gone. Because after this, you don't even care about yourself anymore. You care. And, and when you're asked, you can give a laundry list of hurtful things that, that is happening to you from this relationship, but you justify it. Or, well, you know, he, because again, there's breadcrumbing and there's positive criticism. He's helping you. Or the job is helping you pay your bills. Like, I can't quit the job. I need to pay the bills, I'll lose my home, right? But ultimately the abundance that should be paying for our homes, guys, should be coming from our source energy. And we don't realize that by giving away our power for love or for the love of our work or whatever we're doing it for, we don't realize is that we're selling our soul to this matrix. Now, in all of this, you can be a healer, a teacher, a guru, okay? You can be a wizard. You could be a mother. You could be literally a psychologist and be living this and not know. Can everyone say that they have experienced this? 100%, six ways sideways on every Tuesday, okay? Like it's just what we have experienced in this reality. Now, do you see why it is so hard to get out? Because once you've made agreements with this, with this relationship, you're, you're a fighter. You'll stick through it. You'll wait for those breadcrumbs. You'll like, and, and you'll worship them. You'll frame them, that card that you got once. You'll keep the dead flowers from their, you know, doghouse flower experience. Like you almost kicked them out and you got flowers and now you're framing the flower. 
because you want to have a momentum of when they were in their true self, right? So this is why you will hit rock bottom with money, with time, relationship, and health. If you are at the end of that a seven cycle of manipulation. So if you're finding yourself here, I'm with you. <laughs> okay. Like, and, and we have to be reborn from these ashes because your worth was always there. That's why you were so attractive to them. Okay. But you were probably coming off of another phase of this. And so you didn't even realize how amazing you were. If, if you are so amazing that that's why someone would want to capture you, you see, but they have to make you feel small to keep you because you're a wild stallion, divine feminine. You are nature. Like you are abundance. This maleistic world that we live in could not move around and be anything without us. And we couldn't be anything solid without the masculine. So not only have this, the, this definition of love been the seven steps of manipulation is built in every platform of corporate work. Even when you try to be an entrepreneur, I still have to go through these seven steps if I, I want to create something. This is why I've done it with very small investments of people that I highly trust, no banks. Because again, like if I take the vision of my future 5D and I put it in a bank's hand, what do you think they're going to do with it? Right. And may they may not even know what I'm doing with it. It's just the seven steps. It's just basically designed for me to need them, but not really be able to have them. Okay. Because the one thing at the end of the seven steps, why you start to feel insane over these relationships and, and situations is because of how connected you feel to them or how much you need them to stay alive or to live your life. Okay, you literally, you can be a very aware conscious being and still experience this. Because again, this is designed to chip away at your awareness using your own heart. And empaths, why we are so attracted to narcissistic behavior is because we have so much to give. So we are the perfect, perfect, perfect victim, right? So, now, here's where the, the uncomfortable conversation comes in. And we're a little bit over, but I want to keep going a little. Is everybody okay for me to keep going? Yeah? Okay. The uncomfortable part of this is that you have unwillingly done this too. And maybe not to this extreme. So let me tell you what we do as, as women. Dermot, you'll enjoy this conversation. And then I'll show you from a male's perspective, if a woman is doing this to you, what you'll do. All right. So when we feel connected to a man, go back to step one. Okay. Or something that feels masculine, right? Provider, protector, fixer, builder. Okay. We feel like we have found Prince Charming, or we have found the thing that's finally going to give us a way to truly be ourselves. We feel like we're going to be able to be all of ourselves. Finally found a place to put our whole heart that we have like we got so much to give, like finally someone who wants to take all of it. Okay. And see when the attachment piece comes, we turn into nurturers. Okay. Well, now it's attachment. So I'm going to nurture it. I'm going to grow it. I'm going to make something out of this. I'm divine feminine. Okay. You give me a C, I'll make a baby. You give me a connection. I'll turn it into a marriage. You give me, you give me attention, I'll turn it into a whole world. Okay. So this is what women do is they take a connection and they start making it bigger. They involve homes, other people, other bills, other debts, other things that it will entrap us into this connection because now we want to make it big. Okay. We get all kinds of stuff involved, right? We're going to, because we're space and abundance, honey. That's what we do, okay? So what happens is when we start taking a connection and start making it really big, we're in masculine, right? The masculine is supposed to build the relationship, right? 
but because we're so full and we're so, where have you been? I've been waiting for you for 30 years. We are at the end. Like I'm already writing my last name after two dates. So I've already made this a whole big thing. And the masculine starts to feel like, like starts to pull a little bit because like, hey, that's my job, okay? But because it's all happening so fast and excited and she seems so happy about it, right? Then it's kind of like going along with it, okay? So then what happens is, let me go to the next one. You, you get the agreement, whether he agrees or not. Because at this point, the sex is amazing, right? Like, wow, I'm getting laid five times a day. You build, honey, whatever house you want, okay? And this is in a metaphor. Not all relationships are like this. But like in a job, you get that first paycheck, right? You're already spending money because you got a paycheck coming. So you can already spend that money and turn it into what you're already putting a down payment on a house with that paycheck. You see, so women who have been starved from a masculine energy will start just running ahead with this relationship. So once the attachment comes, she doesn't even know how, uh, how in it she's in because now she's making it more, okay? And he's going along with it. And this is where the breadcrumbing starts because he was never really sold on it or the masculine was never really sold on you as an employee. And so it's just kind of going along with the hype because you're producing a lot, you're giving a lot, but you don't even notice that they're not giving a lot. You don't even notice your paycheck is late. You don't even notice that like you're having sex with this guy five times a day and he hasn't called you beautiful all, all day. You know what I mean? Like you're not getting what you're giving, but because we are so overflown, with love and, and stuff we're like, we're so like, we're not allowed to give the love that we have that when we finally find a source, we dump it. Okay. Now what we also do, this is the way we hurt ourselves feminine is we get obsessed and we start to let go of other outlets that we had of our, our, our outlets, our hobbies, our friends, our connections, and not really because we don't want to, or not allowed in the beginning, it's just that we become very obsessive over growing this relationship, right? Or we get knocked up or we move in together too fast and now we're going to make the best of it, okay? So you've been in this situation somewhere where it's all happening and you don't even notice the seven steps until you're like trying to like, what is happening, okay? So another thing that feminine does is with the breadcrumbs is they start turning you into or the masculine into what they wish you were instead of what you are. OK, we go into the fantasy of of like like who this person is. And we start to create a complete alteration of what we're actually getting in the relationship to keep us going. Right. So it's like we've got like this amazing partner in our mind. But if someone would be like, hey, look in present moment, you'd be getting breadcrumbed. OK, and you wouldn't even notice it because the way that we stay in is survival as women is we use our imagination. All right. We will imaginate something better, no matter what we're doing, if we can. OK. All right. Would you all agree that we've done this? Yes. Feminine. OK. Dermot, you probably witnessed this. OK. So then what happens is because the masculine is like really attached to the energy that he's getting, the sex, the connection, the nurturing, it feels kind of maybe overwhelmed of how fast she wants to go, but kind of going with it because, you know, he's getting older and maybe that's what he needs. Okay. And so then what happens is when, when you start to have those emotional outbursts, okay, because you're realizing that this guy is not a team player or your company is not a team player with you, right? Or you start to drop the ball somewhere and you start to get criticized. Well, now all that big attachment that you've created you start to go into guilt and shame for it. Ooh, the house, the cars, the babies, the commitment, right? And women, we like, we grow things, okay? So if we were in a relationship, we're gonna try, uh, everything inside of us is to grow it, okay? Like that's what we wanna do. And even if it sucks, we will make the best way we can out of it. And actually what we've done is we've turned a energetic connection into a, a whole life without even realizing 
that it's not balanced, okay? And we might be giving way more than we're getting. Now, because we are in non-duality and because energy is not necessarily defined to gender, then there is a lot of men who are attached to more of their feminine who are doing exactly the same thing. Dermot, have you done this? I figured. Because he's our he's he's our our token masculine, but he is also he's also very feminine in his uh, love languages, right? Like as his approach. So guaranteed that he's probably been the one that's done this. And the girl's like, whoa, man, I just thought we we're having great sex here. You know, like, so again, it doesn't mean that it's just a woman doing this. I'm talking about feminine energy, which is source. Okay. And, and, and being in a contradiction of being so full of love and starving at the same time. That's when we attract a twin flame, okay? A twin flame is designed to burn you to ashes, all right? So, so then what else we do is because now our worth is starting to go and we feel foolish for everything we've created and how we have literally created 16 attachments out of one attachment. Now we literally have to work around the clock to just make these attachments work, to pay the bills, to keep going, to raise the kids. Never once even going, do I really love this person? Right? Because of course I do. Of course I do. Right? It's like, I'm too, I'm too attached to even, I'm, I, I'm too far in. And because you have started to lose yourself so much and your worth is so low, now all you're doing is feeding the beast. All you're doing is throwing money at the bills. All you're doing is keeping your head above water and your body is starting to get sick. And ladies, we'll put on weight because we don't feel safe. We'll, we'll put on weight because our beauty is being criticized. We'll put on weight because it's a way to keep him away from us. We'll put on weight because we're waiting, right? We'll put on weight because the only highest excitement that I can find is sweets, okay? So- that, when you guys are dealing with weight, you got to look for seven steps of manipulation. If you are dealing with a weight problem right now, there's a seven step in your life. There's a seven step masculine energy that is dominant in your reality. I'm going to tell you the final end of where it might be at the very end. Okay. So after we've done this and we start looking crazy and we start threatening to leave, I'm going to tell you a secret. Masculine falls in love with feminine in her absence, not her presence. Okay, so when you start taking your energy away from a man, they remember why they love you. Because you're so big, it's just like, can you, it's like looking at the sun, right? Can you go over there and you're like, you don't love me. You take your energy away. Like you could literally like be in attachment with someone, have a session with me. We break attachment, they call you as soon as we get off the phone. You haven't heard from them in two weeks. That's how fast it is. Or they ask you to come back to your job. When you finally let go, that's when you start to get the good behavior, guys. Because, oh my God, her energy was amazing. I miss it. Okay? Or vice versa, him, her, whoever. The, this is a masculine, feminine game here, not bodies. All right? This could, be a, this could be a lesbian couple that I'm talking about right here. This has nothing to do with bodies. This is feminine energy and masculine energy in the seven steps of, ma of manipulation. Okay? All right. So then what we tr try to do with no worth ultra attached is with our secret addictions now is we try to figure out a way to fix everything. So now again, masculine is provider, fixer, builder. So now we're stepping into masculine role again, trying to fix it and save it and rebuild it and like reignite it and go through couples therapy. Right. And so this is where then men are like, Hey, you're withholding sex and blah, blah, blah. And it's like this whole game starts to happen. And all of a sudden, you're just, you're feeling more and more and more unworthy. And so what do a woman do when she feels unworthy? She gives more. That's what a feminine energy does when she feels unworthy. She gives more. Now, what will happen? She will give and give love, solutions, money, opportunities. She will give, 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 give until she snaps. And then what you're going to get is hellfire. Okay. And depending on what state of emotional health she is in, this is where she might just destroy the whole thing. Okay. Not very likely for an empath or a sensitive woman to do that, but we have seen it in history. Okay. Because again, she knows intuitively the only way to clean slate 
is to fully destroy the whole thing. Okay. And so this is happening over and over again, like a, a broken record. And because it's the whole system is built on the, on this program, this is the way we fall in love. We fall in love when we fall out of alignment. So you think, I finally met him. I was doing all my spirit work. I was doing all this. No, no. What happened is you made your light so shiny that the matrix was like, oh, a food source. And we can seven step her all the way till doomsday or fire. Because what happens is because we're indestructible is we can get all the way to zero point. We can totally destroy everything. And guess what? We get rebooted because we're divine feminine. We are completely limitless when it comes to energy. Like I, you could, I could be in a hospital on a tube and they could still be siphoning my energy as divine feminine. That's why they keep people alive, right? It's like your free will have gone now. Let's just suck the energy out of it. Because again, just like the electricity in your house, your ceiling fan will not move without divine feminine, okay? And so this seven step cycle does not care. They break you down, they drain you dry, and then you destroy yourself and you come back as a butterfly and you're like, ooh. And all that happens is the game gets more clever, okay? So, so what a masculine will do is he will feel guilt and shame that he wasn't really invested, right? And so he goes along with all of this and because he's feeling unworthy of her energy in general, like he knew she was out of his league in the beginning or vice versa. It's like, I just want to stay in the relationship. And so a lot of the times your partner is going along with things, not even being a part of the relationship, just going through the motions and literally having a completely double life or, or has a completely different idea of what they would prefer. Okay. And this is where, you know, like affairs happen or like your, you know, your partner would rather be doing this or working or like just doesn't seem very connected to you. Okay. Because ultimately, if a divine masculine is not inspired, turned on by feminine, he will not invest in her. But feminine, because we have had to switch to masculine, we have invested in them for them. We have invested in the job for the company. We have invested our extra hours to put into the company that we're not getting paid for because we are doing what men are supposed to be doing, which is investing in feminine, making her feel safe and free, providing for her so that she can take people, mankind to source energy. That is what divine masculine's whole purpose of existence is, is to keep feminine, happy and safe so she can lead mankind to source energy. Also, feminine, your biggest role is to lead mankind to source energy. So I'm going to give you something that's really going to stab you right now, ladies. If your guy that you are with right now has not become more awake, more spiritual, more in tune with his self in the relationship, you're not doing your job, okay? And the reason why is because we've been leading with the masculine and we either become their mother, their life coach, or their roommate. That is not a turn on for a man, okay? What turns a man on to spirit is what turns him on, okay? Not having access to you all the time, not have you planning the whole life, not having you move too fast, not having you spend all the money, not having you do, you know, everything. So um, a masculine will pretend he is invested in the relationship. He'll even marry you, okay? Or she'll marry you. But they're not investing in you, okay? They're invested in the life, okay? But they're not invested in you because they keep criticizing you. They keep naming, they keep telling you the things you need to shift a little bit, or maybe you should, uh, and this really was a stab in my heart, okay? Because like the, so women, we are actually a few things. We become the mother. We become the life coach, the pushy preacher. 
you should be doing this. You should watch Jessica, right? You should do that, okay? We become the preacher, the life coach, the mentor, the boss, okay? Or we become the charging station. Ladies, if all your husband wants from you is sex and he don't care what you do outside of that, then you have the only way he's getting source energy from you or, or getting source energy from himself for himself is through sex. Isn't that sad? Our job, Divine Feminine, is to lead mankind to their source, not ours. We're supposed to be the example of source energy. And so a man should be so inspired by your freedom and your happiness and your, your expression. I want some of that. He will invest in us femininely in a word like, and go, I want to learn. And so when I realized that my partners never got more spiritual in my presence, yet people are paying me thousands of dollars for spiritual guidance, that was a big wake up call that I was in my masculine. Okay. And I thought I was in my feminine the whole time. So it wasn't something that was obvious. Now, if I'm leading in my masculine, I'm going to create a partner that is more feminine. And I don't mean feminine like girly girl. I mean like not driven, wants to play all the time, doesn't really care about what I care about. Like he's leading more from that living in the moment, like let's make get rich quick. Like he's not building a, a, not building a legacy for our family. That was me. I'll build the legacy for our family. And I never even saw it because that was the way that I taught that, that I was taught that love is. Okay. So if you're hearing this and you're like, ooh, because again, what happens is we start to get on our spiritual journey, ladies, and we start to worry about our partner. We're like, ooh. So what we do is instead of being the example of what source energy is, we push it on them. You need to get to source energy. I've even seen women threaten. If you do not wake up or get on your journey, I'm out. Okay. A man is like, screw your source energy, right? I'll go get it from a 20 year old who doesn't care. So you have to understand that this is tough love I'm, I'm giving you today. All right. And, and I have been through all of this. And when I realized that the guys that I were, there was only one person, and he's my person that has been in my life now that he'll actually do breath work with me right? But see, to me, it's like, because we're criticized when we are authentic, because source energy is authentic, when we're meditating, they're like, mm, or you're doing your stuff again, right? And they, they are interested. They are, they wouldn't be attracted to us in the first place, guys. But what happens is we, we push too much on them because we we're starving for our attention and love. And so Instead of gently letting it out, like the cat and mouse, like here's a little of source energy so that they take the bait, right? Because again, a man is not connected to his spirit without divine feminine, okay? So if your guy is watching a shit ton of porn or something or spending a bunch of money, he's trying to find a connection to source. So we can't really be mad at them if they're still searching for that, but they're just like, we are looking in all the wrong places for an attachment. They're looking in all the wrong places for the energy that you used to give them, right? Or whatever, okay? So I have a few minutes. I feel like we should have a discussion about this. Now, again, everything I'm saying is absolutely true, but the lines are blurred how it happens, okay? Because again, Sometimes you've done this. Sometimes it's happened to you. It's not a male or female body. It's just the, the masculine world. The collective is masculine, okay? The bank, the money, the system is masculine. It's empty without source. So you can see now why they want to entrap source energy because we make the whole thing go. And if we're playing by the rules and we're doing what we're supposed to do, then we never get back to our own source energy all the way, okay? So let's have a discussion about this. Does anybody want to speak about anything that they've experienced or add anything or aha moment they experienced or anything? Because this will stop you from getting into your characters. And that's why we're having this talk today. Anybody? 
Donna? Um, I've been in a really wonderful relationship for quite some time, like 20 years. And honestly, he's not, he's not motivated. I recognize that piece that you saw. He's not motivated. Mm -hmm. I also recognize I've been in my masculine mm -hmm. in, a, in a real big way. Because you, that's how, what's kept you safe on this earth. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. I've kind of left him behind as far as the spiritual stuff goes, it's like, I don't care if he has a connection to source. I'm just going to keep moving forward and do what I do. Right. But there's an emptiness in that. Mm -hmm. Right. Because again, there's so many things that you get to experience that he would have no real understanding for. It's kind of like when they talk about their job and our eyes glaze over, right? Like, oh. <laughs> and then they and then we're talking about what is like the most exciting thing in the world, and they're like, "Yeah, well, cool." Like you know, okay, so you talk to aliens, you know. So it's like, I, I, you know, and so, and I know your guy; he's amazing. So again, when I say seven steps of manipulation, I I don't I'm not giving this a bad or a good. This is just collectively the standard. And so the thing is, is the whole system is designed to make men and women feel so unsafe with their source that we become masculine because then we can only attract feminine mates and we will never really partner up. Because what would happen is if I was truly in my feminine and I truly created a masculine male partner, okay? I would end this so fast because the union of the hemispheres is actually what creates worlds, okay? The true union of masculine and fem a masculine that can build an empire and a feminine that can fuel it? Would we need banks? Would we need systems? Absolutely not. So the way that it is right now is that we have felt so unsafe in our femininity, right? That will shape shift into a masculine persona, not looks, you know, cause I feel feminine, but the way that we show up and the way we get shit done and the way we make things happen, Okay. And the way that we're able to do things, we're leaving men with no job and it's emasculating them. And when they feel emasculated, men will get either ornery, destructive, or a, they'll just ignore you. Okay. And they'll just go into their own worlds. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that they don't love you. It just means that they're not able to do their job. But then women say, well, I don't they have to be a damsel in distress. No. This is why I'm getting ready to launch the 15 week. And that's like, it's taken me two years to, to start leading with my feminine again. I mean, two years is, is very long because I feel like I have generations of strong women. They've all been masculine, right? All have kind of had a hatred towards men or something. But like when I, when I finally start leading with my feminine, right? It's very, very scary and new. Like half of the things that I'm gonna teach you guys in this other workshop, I didn't even know until like this last year that I was doing, you know, because again, like we can get shit done at work. Why can't we make a freaking relationship work? Right. Like, and, and like for Donna, as long as he's happy and he loves me. Right. But the, if, if the, if the way to his source energy is through intimacy. Okay. And then you're not feeling good. So you can't give that to him. Right. So again, there's unconditional love and investment, especially when you own homes and stuff together. And I'm not saying that anybody's going to cheat or leave each other, but I'm just saying at the root of this fundamental, it's not, it's empty. It's like, there's like your partner's missing from the relationship somehow. Like you're having this relationship without him sometimes or her. Okay. And, and again, there's some really good men and women out there that are in your relationship with you that might be on the other side of the spectrum or where they would prefer to be that you attracted from their wounding, right? So if they were emasculated, they, they are just going along their own program too. They had a strong mother, you know, like, and so it's like, if you start to lose the intimacy of the connection to your husband, it is because you've stepped into the mother role and you don't want to have sex with your son. Okay. Mm -hmm. It isn't actually about your libido at all. You are just over nurturing and you're over giving. And so you're going to have an underlying resentment there. And that comes from an out of exchange energy. Okay. Because if Donna would slow down a little to speed up, okay, then what would happen is her energy 
would be so bright and not overwhelming that he would be like, what is this source energy stuff here? You see, it's just that we get so excited when they have the tiniest bit of like inclination of interest in what we're doing, then they right? Or like in Dermot's case, I know he's had some very like woke relationships because he's, he finds a lot of women that are in the same world as us. Like they're, they're also on their journey and they're also, but it doesn't mean that the gender energy is aligned, is it? Dermot, I would love to hear from you real quick on what, what this is, what this has brought for you, this understanding. Yeah, like it, it is exactly that, the, you know, finding, maybe, maybe that's, I was thinking, maybe that's why I have this kind of feminine edge, because um, I'm very masculine, but I've had to mm -hmm. kind of balance my feminine because like a lot of the women that I've kind of couple of girlfriends I've had over the past couple of years are single moms who've had to masculine. become that kind of masculine Strong. energy. So for me to right. be even appealing to them, it's almost my feminine attributes that kind of go, you know, they, they don't want help with the, you know, with, with like rust, rust on their car, they can do that themselves. They don't want mm -hmm. help with, you know, this and that, you know, they, they want, you know, like, but, but they let me step in and cook, you know, so they let mm -hmm. me come in and do like a, you know, almost like you get a feminine. To, you need to do the woman's job, right? Yeah. The feminine. yeah. Well, and yeah, you're so, also an artist and a musician. So yeah. that is going to, that, that is going to, if you have any wounding, that is going to kind of put the feminine in the forefront. Because if you're mm -hmm. an artist, musician, healer, teacher, like, and you're doing this work, that's source energy. So you, your, your, your whole life is source energy. And so that's why you're going to attract a masculine partner. So, so really all we have to do in your situation is, is balance the wounded masculine within you, you see? So that that wounded masculine can step up and then attract a feminine mate so that you could really blow up with. Because you'll see that if it's, if, if I'm leading with my masculine and I attract a feminine or an, a mass, I'll say, I won't say feminine, I'll say emasculated male somehow, right? Then what's going to happen is it's just going to kind of chip away until it destroys. But if it is aligned, it becomes an explosion of expansion. And that's how you know the difference. So if your relationship has not exploded into like businesses and like lots of happy, healthy kids and homes and like, like, like it isn't multiplying, then it's probably being misled gender wise. And I don't mean gender, I mean energy. Okay. So, so like, like we're going to work on that because I, I, what I've like sat with is like, do I help the masculine first or do I have the feminine first? Like I've been at this like weird place for the last couple of weeks writing these because I have the male workshop too, but here's what I realized is that guys, men, I love you. And you're, you're, you're going to learn from our example. We've got to do this first. So feminine, we have to get out of the masculine. And the way that we have to do that is we have to heal the wounds that are causing us to be masculine because we don't feel safe. So all we have to do is get rid of the pain that is causing us to not feel safe and start attracting from feminine. Now, what this does, this gets the male attention, okay? And the masculine attention differently. And we stay in our 15 steps of femininity, which I'm gonna show you guys, okay? Like we, we hold to it like it's our Bible until we change our formula here. And then what will happen is through what we were supposed to do in the beginning is through example, we get the men interested in source energy. Because I can't start teaching a masculine source energy when he's getting sex for free and not even having to be a part of his own family. Why would he care? You see, as long as he's getting his balls empty and his tummy full, I'm sorry to say, and I mean that lovingly. That was advice my grandmother gave me, okay? Like, that's how you make a man happy. It's sad, really, because a man like Dermot needs attention and connection and so many other things. But I'm talking about, like, the primal guy, right? And that's another reason why we, we, are, we, we think we're leading with our feminines, because we usually attract mates that look very masculine or look very feminine. So it's not like, you know, it, 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 it's the outside that is like, don't judge a book by its cover, right? Because I've had some very kind of big cowboys 
that I could kick their ass. And how sad is that? I'm five, nothing, you know, I'm like, I'm, you can protect me for anything, you know, but you don't know that based on how they seem. So the direction that I felt intuitively guided to take this was to take women through their rehabilitation first back to feminine. And then through example, see, the thing is, is like, if I was in my feminine, whether it was a masculine man or a feminine man, I could lead that feminine man back to his masculinity like that. If I was in my true feminine, because I'm source energy. Okay. But if I'm leading with my masculine, it's going to be an alpha thing going, isn't it? Like I've told you guys that billionaire I dated like last year or something. And he, you know, I, I had everything done and because I don't want to be a burden. You know, I got kids, I got baggage. I don't want to be a burden to someone. He comes in, he's like, there's already a guy living here. And I'm like, who? I had a nice dress on. I'm very feminine. He's like, you, he was out. And I was like, what? you know, like, okay. I didn't even know. Like to me, I was as feminine as I came, but I had my bills paid. I got my house perfect. Like my the food was cooked. Like he didn't need to fix not one light bulb in my house. I don't want to be a burden. I just met you. But apparently like, because I've led with my masculine, like I'm only going to attract men who need mothers or a charging station or a life coach or a roommate. That is not fulfilling, right? And so this was like, you know, this is a big shock to my ego. Okay. So I've been in this prepper, I've been in this rehabilitation now for over a year of these 15 steps. And it was the hardest thing I've ever done, to be honest. Changing from a masculine, which is where I feel safe, where I feel strong, how I've been able to make a living, to I don't chase, I attract feminine, it's like, it's pretty scary, right? But what choice do we have? Because what we're looking at is falling into these seven steps of manipulation when we are not balanced. Because the only reason that we attract another relationship like this or another job like this is because we aren't balanced to start. If we were balanced, we would never manifest someone who could get us that low, that quick, or that codependent, okay? Because like in certain situations, you may feel like you're light years ahead of your guide, but he might be paying the rent because you've got a money wound, you see? So you see, you got to look for the codependency in your attachments, right? And you got to look at what part of source energy you think you're getting from holding on to them. That's what you have to look for. Okay. Does anybody have anything else they want to share? Okay. So I'm going to be teaching you guys these 15 steps in our class, but not in the way that I'm going to be in the 15 week workshop where it's just all divine feminine energy train. And Dermot, it'd be great for you too. So, you know what I mean? Like just to know what just, I feel like observing, like I'm going to, I'm going to take my own masculine class just because I want to see like what that's going to be like. But these 15 weeks are going to be very intense because I'm talking about deep, deep reprogramming. Think about ladies. It goes back so far for us not being safe, being feminine. We have been raped and killed and manipulated and used and drained and sacrificed for thousands of years. So your flip into masculinity when you're born into 3D is a no-brainer, right? And if you're not like overly masculine in some areas, you're probably like a masculine victim, okay? Where you're very codependent on your masculine, but you're stubborn, okay? So again, this is going to fall into categories and, and there's no right and no wrong here. Because like I was saying is 2023, Three is really about just waking up more and more and more because we want to be free. Divine feminine energy is free. It isn't dark. It isn't light. It's just source. Masculine isn't dark. It isn't light. It's just creator. It's just form. And we have been indoctrinated to be at war with each other. It's like, I'm not in the right role energetically. So I can't track a mate energetically in the right role. So we can't build a reality together. So we're at war. And now we're making a bunch of kids that are at war with us. And now we're up against these seven cycles of manifestation and, and, and manipulation out there. So you see how the game is designed. It knows exactly 
what we are. And when I started doing quantum fitness and realized that the whole reason that I was not able to channel source, like in all areas of my life was because my two hemispheres weren't connecting any other time except channeling teaching, like making money, they were not on the same page. Okay. Like, and so it was just like, when I started getting that sync synchronicity with my brains and started channeling direct, that's when I started seeing the world. Like I took off glasses and I was like, oh gosh. So the root of my body issue is my masculine feminine at war. The root of our issue out here is that we're turned against each other. Okay. So this is exciting. I feel because if we can get our role back safely, okay. In a in a like step-by-step -step process where it's like, okay, when I teach you guys these steps, that's like, you do not chase, you attract. Well, how do you do that? Okay. So I've already included the how in, in that as well. All right. So some of you guys are working with like side projects for me. Um, I would be willing to do, to do what we're doing on the side projects to give you this other workshop if you're interested. Otherwise, I'm going to give you the 15 steps in our class. OK, but they're just not going to be like all, the, the whole year is not going to be focused on divine feminine like this workshop. I was going to try to put it all together. And I think it would just be too confusing because it's just too much information. OK, so that's going to get released today. We're going to start that February 15th. Um, students, it's the same discounted price as this class. Um, anybody else is going to be whatever the price is on the website. But like I said, do not feel obligated to take the divine feminine class. You'll get the 15 steps here, but you'll have to work with all the other character building and non-duality. So the two focal points of today's session is, okay, you're in some fertilizer right now. How is it trying to feed you? And how is it feeding you? Is it feeding your focus? Is it feeding your intentions? Is it feeding your, like, are you getting more present because of the problem? Good. You have to see this in non-duality. You have to see your fertilizer as it's getting you into higher self's driving seat, no matter how uncomfortable the ego is, all right? It's getting you into the right place, the fertilizer that you're in currently. Mm, scary. Second, start paying attention to the seven the steps of manipulation everywhere. Look at past jobs, business partners, relationships. Look at how you might be breadcrumbing in your own relationship, okay? That's probably the one you're going to notice the most empaths is that you start to withhold your energy or you start to feel shut down. That's probably where you're going to notice the most because you may not notice in other areas where you're doing this. And again, there's no judgment here. We're in discovery. We are just ripping apart this whole game. And so that we can start streaming, like we will never be able to be one with our higher self when we're at war out there with anything. Or if I'm in survival out here, then I'm not, I'm not connected to my source because I wouldn't just be surviving if I was connected to my source. So divine feminine is about getting back to direct streaming. And it also means having lots of outlets. So we're not focusing all on the relationship or all on the business or all on the kids, because that's when divine feminine starts to get cuckoo. Okay. So having lots of those outlets again and having girlfriends again, you know, just being around other women, you start to realize these seven steps. It's like you can talk about your relationship to a woman and see how bad your relationship is. Okay. And you're like, ooh. if you have a relationship that you don't want to talk about out loud because nobody will understand it, it's the seven steps. Okay. And it's like, eh, it sounds way worse when I say it, but when I'm living it, it's not that bad because you're surviving it and you're an adaptable, influential being. So you're, you're literally making the best of it. And I am not telling anyone to leave because we're in 5D, which means win-win, which means no long, however long you've been in this marriage or this relationship, you can shift this. Because if you've been able to be married as long as you say you have, some of you 20, 30, 40 years, okay, they love you. <laughs> you're, you're, you're literally like a growth. You're not, they're not going anywhere. So you might as well start giving them this opportunity to see you. In not such a bearing, angry, abrasive, focused, rigid way, because that ain't divine feminine. Okay. If anything, they're going to get the wife that they thought they were getting in the beginning. And you're going to get the freedom back because they will lovingly give it to you. All right. So, really strong class today. 
Um, hopefully everybody got something from it. And again, let's set an intention that there's nothing that we've done wrong here except do our most loving way of being. I mean, all of this we've done through love, guys. Every single ounce of this came from good intentions and love, right? So if we're gonna build a new character that just is in freedom of her own femininity and his own masculinity and still able to manifest and create, then we deserve that now. But again, it's not something that has ever been taught or it isn't, even if you go look at it online, you're gonna see divine feminine principles and you're gonna be like, how? That's the number one thing you're gonna say is how the hell do I do that after the life I've created? Well. I've been spending the last year reconstructing each part of my life so that I could be leading with my feminine and I'll show you how, okay? I'll also show you what's been happening to the masculine when I do that. And so, you know, it's gonna be an obvious, because they're formed, they're waiting for source, okay? They're waiting to, to, to heal their own emasculated self. They're waiting for this, but they're going to wait as, you know, they're like trees. They don't give up on us as long as we're providing us some source, okay? So let's just like really forgive ourselves for whatever we have contributed to this and, and let go of where we have been the victim of this and be like, okay, well, I didn't know better. I didn't know what I didn't know, all right? And we start this new year from scratch. Like all I know is my new character leads from divine feminine. And that's enough for me right now, okay? So I don't need to know like how that looks all the way, but I know that I am not getting away from those 15 steps, no matter what, okay? Because that is really helping me. So if anybody's interested in that class, reach out to me. Otherwise, I will give you these steps in this, in this class, but not in the way that I'll be delivering only that and the house there, okay? So I will see you guys soon next week and work on those two things. How is your fertilizer feeding you? And where are these seven steps have unfolded in my life? And how can I maybe pay attention earlier? Okay, do not make choices in lack. That's when you get this relationship of attachment. Okay, all right, love you guys. See you soon, bye.